I mean, I, I never realized the thriving community that kind of exists on Instagram of, of craft beer drinkers. Like, and it really made me realize that basically anything you're into, you can probably find a community online and who's, who's excited and, you know, wants to learn and, and communicate and connect. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All Beer Inside. Uh, Quarantine-ish uh, editions of the episode. Things are starting to open it up again. So thankfully, uh, you're going to get a mix of, of these and uh, live brewery interviews in the future. So uh, here's where the show's going. And joining me today, I have Jesse and Cal. They're also known as the Stein Guys on Instagram. How's it going? Hey, Good to see you. Here. Good. Uh, thanks a lot for taking time and your schedules to speak with us about uh, your Instagram and your beer passions today. We always appreciate anybody who's willing to take time out of their schedule to speak with us. I think we're both really excited to be here. It's going to be fun to chat yeah. some beer. Re really <laughs> appreciate it. I love talking beer. Yeah. And uh, since we're talking about beer, we always share a virtual beer. I'll start with Cal. Uh, what you drinking? Let my audience know what you're drinking today. Yeah. So tonight I have a Whistler Brewing Co. Sunny Days Yuzu IPA. Um, I'm actually in BC right now, so really enjoying some of the beers out here, and Whistler Brewing Co. is one of my favorites. Um, and I also love the artwork on this can. I think it's super, super cool. Um, some really cool artistry going on the can, so big fan and love the beer. Very cool. Uh, Jesse, what are you having today? I'm having a new one for me. Um, I went to the LCBO earlier, and I'm trying Beyond the Pales uh, Yummy. I believe it's a Northeast Pale Ale. So it's a it's a good one. Got a whole bunch of hop and a nice flavorful uh, punch at the front. And similar to Cal, I'm a big fan of the artwork that uh, is on this can. They've got a, some hops jumping out and some cool, uh, you know, graphic novel type uh, cartoons on there. So yeah, it's a good beer. I haven't, uh, haven't tried anything from these guys yet. I think they're from Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, having uh, uh, the world shut down, missing uh, being where I am in Montreal, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get to be on the pale in the last 16 mm. months, but uh, I'm hoping soon. Uh, as for myself tonight, uh, from our interview two before today, uh, McFearley, it is a Scottish Quebecois brewery. Uh, it is a Mel American pale lager with Calypso hops, uh, and it's got that kind of neat, you know, Scottish artwork stuff. So... Uh, talking about artwork, it looks like we're all doing stuff and there's a little story. It's all in French and I'm not going to break it down today because so, uh, my French is not 100% for where I live. And we it's do better a virtual, than ours. Yeah, virtual toast, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, cheers. Thanks for a having toast. us. Let's see if I can get this today. Close enough. <laughs> What's everyone's glasses today? That's a fun thing, too. Uh, I got the, the classic craft style and it's uh, my local beer store called Malt A Hops. Uh, so malt and hops in, in English. Uh, they're nice. pretty, pretty awesome. Great beer selection at all times. Uh, awesome owners. So that's wicked. Cal, what are you rocking with? I got the kind of sleeve style glass. It's actually from the beer farmers. Um, actually, which is a, a brewery up in Pemberton, BC. And um, one of my, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah. But it's funny. I'm mixing a, a Whistler brewing beer with a, with a beer farmer's glass. So <laughs> they don't quite match, but they're delicious. Nonetheless. It doesn't matter. Well, I've got, I've got Black Labs, so I'm mixing too. So we're all we're all doing a good combo here. <laughs> uh, Black Labs, so much so much great dogs to pet while drinking beer. It's it's always fun place. Uh, and yeah. Hopeful future interview for the show. Uh, now that Ontario starting to reopen, as we are in Quebec and BC, so uh, we're looking forward to it. All right, guys. Uh, so I already read the uh, quick synopsis of how you guys got together about two years ago uh, from your Instagram post, but. Whoever wants to take it away, let the viewers know how you guys got together and started talking about beer Instagram. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Jesse take that one because I, I will give him a little bit of credit on that one. He was the inspiration. So I'll, uh, I'll, get, I'll let him take that one because I know it was uh, his original idea. Yeah, no, appreciate that. It's, uh, I think I, I've seen a couple of your episodes and one of the reoccurring themes was a new quarantine hobby. Uh, and I think that that was similar, similar for us, but taking a step back before the page, um, Cal and I both went to university together, uh, and didn't really know each other in the first couple of years, but had a chance to, uh, live together on exchange for six months in Paris, France, uh, which was a really cool place. Again, we had no context of one another before, and we were forced into a 250 square foot apartment, uh, for six months with complete strangers. Luckily, 
uh, you know, we both had a similar passion in a lot of things, but one of them being beer, uh, and we had a chance to go to Oktoberfest together. And so that's really where our love I'd say of, of sharing beer together sparked was that experience of being in Munich for, uh, I was actually the opening day of Oktoberfest would have been, uh, 2017, I think. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, fast forward all this time later, it's been something that, you know, as we've grown as friends, we've just always gone for beers anytime, uh, we just wanted to catch up. And so, uh, during quarantine, we weren't able to hang out and, and share those beers. So I was like, screw it. How can we have a way to one, keep in touch, but also two, still try and, and enjoy beer together. Uh, so I decided let's put together a beer blog. And initially it started off, um, I would say extremely basic. It was just going to be kind of a, a place like a diary, if you will, of beers that we tried. So post COVID we could go to the breweries of the beers that we liked and actually have them in person. Um, and then it kind of spiraled into just being a great way to support local breweries uh, during a time where, you know, there wasn't much that they could do other than deliver. And living in Toronto, we're so lucky with so many awesome breweries who, you know, deliver their beer next day. So we were getting, you know, stuff in from every brewery you could think of around here and just in our separate houses during peak COVID trying, sharing and, you know, uh, posting. So that's kind of how it all got started. Yeah, I I gotta say, as a somebody in Quebec, super jealous that your breweries deliver to you. Uh, we at best have, uh, like, we do. Fortunately, have our beer stores. You guys are actually starting to get bottle shops as well in Toronto, which is awesome. Uh, BC, I actually spoke with uh, Beer Me Canada, so I know BC has the same thing where you have bottle shops as well. Uh, but super jealous of Ontario getting beer deliveries. I gotta say, um, but that's great. And you guys kept in touch now. Now, Cal, what, did work or something else bring you out to BC? Is this temporary or, or is that it? It was actually a bit of a temporary move where I kind of ended up towards during the pandemic, towards the end of 2020. Um, I decided that I wanted to have been working remotely just to like kind of my, my day job, basically, and decided good time to maybe make a little bit of a change and, and try a different location. So I actually drove across Canada to BC and we've been living in the Sea to Sky region for since since January basically and I mean so much great beer out here and it's been a great experience for me and I really enjoyed it but heading back to the city um, in the next couple of weeks actually so back to Toronto so making the drive again so it's going to be a, a another kind of journey back but in the summertime it should be a lot better um, but yeah I mean it's been a really cool experience going to try a lot of the cool beer out here I think that's been something that I mean, you get a little bit, uh, a little bit of flavor for it when, you know, back in the city where you can find a couple BC beers at some of the LCBO stores. Um, the Fat Tug IPA, I know, is one that sits around the shelf sometimes, the LCBO, and is from Victoria. So a couple, you find them here and there, but there is so much out here as well, which I've been really lucky to be able to try. Lots in Vancouver, the island, um, and everything kind of up the Sea Sky Highway there. So lots of cool stuff out here. We're really enjoying it. Lots of beer to try, lots of breweries to check out. Um, it's been, it's been great. Awesome. And you've been kind of open, which has been yeah. cool. Like yeah, you've actually been able to go to breweries. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is maybe a plan of yours. Like if you, if you're doing this or if it's just straight haul back to uh, Toronto, but, uh, do you kind of have maybe a plan of, of hitting some breweries in some major Canadian cities along trans Canada on the way back or. I think it would be great too. We're on a bit of a tight timeline to get yeah. back to be yeah. honest. So we'll see how much you can squeeze in, but, um, there's definitely like a couple through Northern Ontario that, um, I know I'd, I'd love to check out. I'm trying to remember. There's one that I stopped at in Kenora on the way, on the way uh, out here. I can't remember the name at this point. Yeah. But um, some real, a couple of really good spots are there. So we're we're taking our time. And we're going to do some camping up in that region as well. So hopefully, with a little bit of the added time, be able to swing into a couple spots and pick up a couple beers and and check out a couple of new places. So so we'll see how it goes. So hopefully, yeah, and that'll be great for you guys and shared Instagram. It's you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, exactly. Jesse's back in Toronto, but I'm here in Calgary trying this uh, arcade brewery place like type of thing. So that's that's cool. And that's one one thing I wanted to mention is that you guys like I, I find the way you, sh you share uh, your your Instagram is very cool. You each kind of sign off. You have very unique style between the two of you, you know, uh, one more so kind of environment with the beer focused and one just kind of beer focused. What what gives you each that individual style to bring it together in the end? For your Instagram? 
Yeah, I, I think I can, I can start off, Jesse, and then feel free to hop in. Um, I, I think kind of trying to bring the page together, I think part of the things we wanted to do was, was because it was the two of us running it and because it was a little bit like a partnership kind of in, in running the page, we did want to have a little bit of a distinction between the two of us and understanding that we both have our own kind of unique personalities, unique styles um, in one photography aspect of it and just taking photos. Um, but also in just the writing of it and talking about beer and, and talking about what we kind of enjoy about it and what we like and, and what we like to try. So I think trying to highlight or, or, or giving us both a little bit of the creative freedom to a- express how we want to talk about beer in our own way and, and creating that distinction on the page, I think was a really cool thing and kind of happened organically, I'll be honest. Like it, it wasn't really something we, we planned so much as it kind of just happened and the fact that it was the two of us running. We kind of had an idea of, oh, you know, you do a couple posts this week, I'll do a couple posts next week and just start sharing around like that. And it kind of just evolved organically into the two of us having our own kind of unique style of, of, of posting and writing. And, and you kind of mentioned a little in the beginning around some of the things we tried, like the attributes is one thing we gave it, we gave it a go at just to see how do we maybe lend a little bit of structure to the page and try to up the education component of it. Um, Cause obviously this has been a learning journey as well for us. Um, as we really dive or really dove into the craft beer world to learn more about the actual, you know, the drink itself, how is it made? How, what are the ingredients that go into this? What's the process? Um, I know that was a big thing for me is trying to understand that and, and become more familiar with it because that is when you really start to see the experimentation happen in a lot of craft breweries is that's where the fun happens, I think, and where things get really interesting is uh, in the actual creation of the beverage and then kind of how they put it together. So it was really a natural evolution of the page as the two of us just took kind of, we swapped posts every once in a while, but there was no really structure at the beginning to, to try and, I guess, make a unique tone. It was more like just the two of us, each of each being able to share what we wanted to and, you know, maybe swapping here and there, but it happened organically, I would say, in terms of uh, the tone of our posts. Very cool. Jesse, you yeah, want to just- yeah, I'd add just a couple of things. I'd say that the first was, you know, drinking beer for us is uh, it's 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 a love, right? It's a passion. And we didn't really want our page to become super heavy on a work perspective. Like it was like I said, when we initially started, it was more of a diary for us just to keep track of the beers that we liked. Uh, so we never really wanted to have a, a super structured approach. Just kind of wanted to talk how we would talk in real life and talk about the beer, how we would explain it to a friend who you know, was interested in trying it or, you know, if you were a server at a bar, how you'd explain the beer to a customer just to try and keep it very basic. And I think that one of the interesting things about our page is, or about us, is that I'd say we're a fair bit younger than most of people in the the craft beer industry. I, I think that's fair to say we're fairly new to it as well. But the reason being, none of my friends, and I don't think really many of Cal's friends are super into craft beer either. Uh, and so we were with, especially around the attributes aspect, we were trying to find a way to bring it down to, uh, down might not be the right word, but to bring it to a level where, uh, somebody who knows nothing about craft beer could say, okay, instead of a Bud Light, maybe I would, this is a bad example because they rhyme, but maybe I'd prefer a Blood Light, right? Like maybe I'll try like the Blood Brothers, uh, beer instead. So our goal was to try to find a way to, you know, one, because it's more expensive, I think it turns people off who, you know, might not have as much income to spend on uh, alcohol. So explain why it's worth that value. And two, give someone um, some examples of, you know, what they might like based on what they currently drink in the more mainstream beer market was kind of our our approach, I'd say. Yeah, cool. I I like that because uh, it's almost representing like core values when you think about it. Not really like you said, like the beginning, but more of a core value to to the information you're trying to give people about like why you should drink craft, why you should support local. Because I mean, your page says it. I pay. I say it almost every episode, especially more so during the quarantine is support local. That's it. Like, yeah. There's no question about it. You, you know, I'm I haven't. I mean, yeah, I bought some BMC like I say BMC, but most of course. I bought some because I've gone to a softball game or I've been to an Alouettes game and surprisingly a craft beer at an Alouettes game is $13 where I could get a $5 bud for, cause it's Friday night, bud. I'm like, yeah, I'll just, I'll drink this and then we'll go to the brew pub after and drink good beer. But it's, uh, 
uh, when I think about it too, is that, you know, Budweiser is owned by Labatt InBev. Labatt is based in Montreal. Uh, same thing with Molson. Molson's based in Montreal. So at least it started there before they, the whole conglomerate <laughs> thing. But it's like, I'm still technically supporting local, but yeah, I'd prefer to, you know, go to Bruhaha up the street because they make their own beer type of thing. So. Yeah. 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 There's also a place I'd say for all of it. Right. Uh, and to your point, like a softball game is a, is a great experience where you might just want an extremely light, crisp, easy drinking beer. Whereas if I were to have, you know, two or three of these uh, beyond the pails, I would be in trouble. Right. Like for more reasons than not. So, you know, I think there's uh, a time and place for craft and a time and place for the more mainstream stuff as well. But to your point, just ensuring that especially right now we're, we're keeping the breweries uh, doors open the best that we can. Yeah. Supporting local is the most part part. And I'm sure we'd all love beers across Canada. You know, while you're sitting in Toronto, enjoy some Maritimes work. I'd love to work my way personally. I know uh, red racer did the 12 pack of, of a, a beer from each province, but we should get that at all our beer stores. So. Yeah. I, I think it would, I know, I, I'm not totally familiar with all of but, but kind of the, the laws around surrounding um, kind of alcohol sales across provinces, but I know it is a little bit complicated in that like breweries can't necessarily sell to people in Ontario if they're in BC and there's certain regulations around that. And I think there has been work to try and limit those, especially during COVID and that people want to support local. And like, if someone's in Ontario and wants to order a pack of something from a BC brewery, it's like, well, I don't see why they shouldn't be able to do that kind of thing. And like, especially in the world where you know e-commerce is a thing these days it, it would be great to be able to, you know i don't think it means i'm going to support less ontario breweries about in ontario i think as a craft beer drinker it just means it, it widens the pool to to kind of you know experience more beer out there and, and canada is home to a lot of really good beer these days um i think it, it always amazes me you know you can go to pretty much any little small town across the country and you'll probably find a craft brewery and they'll probably have some pretty good beers. Like it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Like kind of the, the craft movement, I guess is like so pervasive across the entire country and little communities everywhere. Um, it, it's pretty incredible. So I asked this of everyone, um, why the Stein guys, why not, you know, craft beer drinker, drinker bros or craft beer bros or anything like that. Like I kind of get the, you guys created this thing in Germany during Oktoberfest. So what made you decide like, this is the name? Yeah, I think I could take that one. It was, uh, I remember distinctly frantically texting Callum. Like I had all these ideas in my head. We're both, we both work in marketing in our, in our day job. So it's, <laughs> you know, this is something that we love to do is to think about branding and, and things of that nature. But um, it ended up being the first good name that wasn't taken on Instagram. Like I was more or less blown away that we were able to get this. Like I tried, you know, probably similar to every craft beer Instagram, you know, all the classic ones that you could think of that are kind of witty and funny surrounding hops or, you know, IPA or beer or whatever craft, et cetera. Like we couldn't find anything, but luckily the Stein guys was there, which felt like a, a perfect fit kind of rhymes a little bit. And, you know, going back to the Oktoberfest thing, just many steins were had. So it, uh, it was a good way to tie in our experience there. And uh, I think it sums us up pretty well. Is that where you guys discovered your love of craft beer or did it start in Ontario? Uh, did... I don't think our love of craft, but um, for me, it was my love of beer. I wasn't a big beer drinker until Oktoberfest. I know Cal had, you had a bit before then, but I wasn't really like, like if I went to a bar, I wouldn't, I wasn't ordering a beer. I'd probably order a, I don't know, like a whiskey ginger or something. And, but now after the Oktoberfest experience, um, I just fell in love with beer. And then I think it's sort of spun for me, at least a bit more into craft since moving uh, to Toronto full-time two years ago, roughly. Okay. Cal, Cal, do you remember that first craft beer that you were like, this is it. This is what I'm drinking from now on. If I can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think actually, because kind of my, uh, I guess experience with craft beer. My dad's a, a big craft drinker, and kind of since I was a, uh, you know, like a, I don't know, whenever I turned nineteen or when I was kind of late teen, like he would always, you know, he was always bringing home kind of cool beers from the beer store, or LCBO or something. Um, and I mean, the artwork's always interesting, and they look great. And you know, he was never kind of the, the kind of guy, or he isn't the kind of guy who just like crack a Bud Light or something. Like I've never seen him do that. He was always a craft drinker, and so. 
I think it was part of that, but, you know, whenever I was at home, um, hanging out with the family, it was always craft beer that was kind of getting, you know, people were pouring. And I think some of the, I think the, maybe the first, <laughs> first craft beer there was probably the Muskoka Mad Tom, um, which I still enjoy today. Like, I mean, it's, it's a great beer, super bitter, like, like it's a, it's a heavy hitting beer, but like, that's one he always liked and would always kind of have in the fridge. Uh, lots of Lake Bays around the house, lots of Muskoka. Um, so, so, so that's kind of where it all started for me is, is drinking craft beer. Um, and then I think kind of as I got out of, or kind of went later into university and kind of finished off and, you know, started making a little bit more money and like actually having kind of money to spend on, on good beer. Um, um, I think it was then it was like, I, I think it was, a, it was a great opportunity to buy, buy beer that tasted really good. Um, and it was just kind of that, that, uh, experience with, with my dad bringing on craft beer all the time and, you know, share it with him or us, my, I have a couple of brothers. So sharing with them as well, all getting together for a drink. Um, that's kind of where it all started for me. And so it was a natural kind of segue onto the page and, and obviously our experience at Oktoberfest sharing with Jesse and kind of getting to hang out there and, and really enjoy that. It's, it's, I've carried it with me throughout my entire drinking life so um yeah i've always been a craft beer fan it kind of started there for me uh jesse you remember your craft beer discovery like you're like oh i like beer but here's beer with flavor yeah it's a good question i think for me it's funny uh i always loved going to pubs growing up my dad's in an irish band and so he would bring me to the bar with him whenever he plays his shows and that's just like an environment environment that really makes me feel at home. And I think that when I first moved to Toronto, uh, I grew up in the States. So this is all like Canada and Toronto is fairly new for me. So when I moved to Toronto for the first time, um, the bars with the coolest atmosphere and like the best ambiance, food, whatever, always were the craft, uh, the craft brewery. So I was living downtown uh, and the, the one that we would always go to after work was Mascot on King. Uh, so it's, it's their smaller location, not their flagship one, but they have an unbelievable back patio. They always have a live DJ in the, uh, brewery. And I think they have something like 40 taps or I don't know, something ridiculous with just, you know, all the sizes you could want. Um, and that's, I think where I first was like, holy smokes, this is pretty sweet. Like you can go in and you got a great ambiance to chat with people, enjoy things. And, you know, the beer was really good too. And I think that's kind of where I clued into Okay, so this is craft beer. So I've been drinking regularly. This is craft. Uh, and then one of my all-time favorites, uh, and I actually think kind of where we started first talking about the blog uh, was Bandit. And um, we were just massive fans of theirs. Um, and, and going there, we went there for dinner one night. I just sat on their patio and just, again, unbelievable beer. So I think one of the first ones for me was their Hive IPA because – and, you know, similar to the Mad Tom, it's a really big hitting IPA, um, but you just have so many natural nuts of honey and amazing hop aroma in there that it was just like, okay, this is very enjoyable um, versus just drinking other beer. So that's kind of where it uh, came into play. Yeah, I uh, unfortunately last time I was in Toronto, let's see, uh, well, it was September last year. So, you know, numbers were low still wearing masks and stuff. Um, uh, and it's like, go to bandit. Oh, there's an hour wait for the patio. Huh? Okay. I'll buy beer to go next day. They're like, Hey, yeah, don't worry. Come back tomorrow. You grass spot. Cool. Show up. There's a wedding. I'm like, come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So it's just, a popular place. Yeah. It's a popular place. So I just ended up at black lab drinking beer, petting dogs. So there you go. Yeah. I think we, uh, I want to say bandit, like that experience with bandit was probably one of the first times we ever tried like beer delivery because it was I think it was really during the start of the pandemic when we um, yeah. started looking at the page and started exploring and and started realizing that so many of these craft breweries either were already doing or just started doing you know delivery to your home and that was something that um, combined with the supporting local piece and we just saw a great opportunity to basically support local businesses and obviously getting something delivered to your house is pretty easy. Like it doesn't, that doesn't take too much work. And like, we were just living downtown at the time. And so it was a great opportunity to, to help out a local business. It was a really cool kind of new, new thing for us to try. We never really done craft beer delivery. And I, that was probably one of the, the first brewery that we ever It was the first with. one. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Bandit gets a special shout out for that. Yeah, we love their beer. So um, they're great people over there. Do you uh, think the brewery uh, home delivery is here to stay? 
I, I, I hope so. <laughs> I think it, I mean, it is a great option for someone, you know, if you live in a couple, if, I think it's great, particularly if you're downtown or something, or you live out, like my family lives out in Scarborough in the city. So like if you're there, a lot of breweries will even deliver from like, you know, across the city, Bandit's kind of over on Dundas West. So like they would even deliver out to there. So I think that having that option, because if I live in Scarborough, maybe I'm not going to think to, I might not drive all the way across the city to go and, and buy beer at a brewery, but if I'm going to deliver like that's a really great, great thing for me to do. Um, but I think I also realize it's probably reasonably expensive for the breweries to maintain that, especially as they get into to opening and running and opening patios and the tap room and that stuff. So from a cost perspective, I can imagine it's probably expensive to do that kind of thing. Um, but also as the, as the city opens up and things begin to open up more, um, and especially at the end of the summer, like getting over to the, through the city and exploring a couple different places becomes a little bit easier too. Um, so I think for maybe a couple breweries, it'll stay, it'll, it'll stick around, um, for maybe some of the bigger ones, but I think for a lot of the smaller breweries who might've started doing COVID, um, I would totally understand if they didn't continue doing that because I'm sure it must be expensive and, and logistically a challenge to, to make that happen. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if Toronto's the same or, uh, BC where you are, but I know here in Quebec, it's like wherever you could make room on a patio, even if it's like on a sidewalk or, <laughs> Oh, uh, we're going to shut down these uh, pedestrian areas to like have the bars kind of still have people. So uh, I'm sure Toronto is the same. Like I just passing by the bandit patio, I could see that they had to reduce the amount of tables in there. So, but I'm sure it's like, Hey, let's add one on the sidewalk here. And like even Godspeed from what I saw real quick, it looked like there was tables like just technically at the brewery, but it was on the sidewalk. So I, yeah. I, I think that stuff should be here until Canada's economically recovered, somewhat recovered from yeah. this. So, yeah, no, I totally agree. I think the the some of those steps that the city put in place to be able to let restaurants and breweries do that kind of thing, I think, was such a such a great move. And um, like I remember, especially throwing back to kind of last last summer ish, where things had, had calmed down a little bit. I think we were kind of out of the first wave and hadn't quite that second wave of the pandemic. Um, and the summer was, I mean, we had a, honestly, I had a pretty great summer. Like I was out in the park, you know, meeting up with people occasionally and, um, you know, maybe grabbing a drink or going to some patios, um, which, which was a great, which is a really fun thing to be able to do in the summer. I think that was one of the best pieces of it is that although a lot of the indoor dining was maybe sometimes was, was closed, you still had a lot of space in the patio. They were able to open that up for people, um, you know, onto the street, onto the sidewalk, which was a, a great great thing for those businesses and that they were able to to add a little bit more space in a in a time when they were really constrained for space considering they probably couldn't use a lot of their indoor so i really liked that they did that i think it was a fun thing that was definitely i know it was around last summer and then i'm glad they did it yeah no it's i mean this sucks uh, pandemics happen every hundred years thankfully we have this technology right now because imagine this was the 90s i don't know how young you guys were even i don't <laughs> know if you guys were legally allowed to drink in the 90s i was near the end of the nineties allowed to legally drink. So it's just, I can't imagine the rampant alcoholism I would have if I wasn't able to drink <laughs> one craft beer and two talk to people virtually <laughs> about this kind of stuff. So. Yes. I, I totally agree. It's definitely been a, a pretty, you know, it's been an up and down experience for sure for everyone. Um, but doing stuff like this, I think, I think actually the page has been a really cool kind of out of the comfort zone thing for us as well. Like, I mean, I, I never realized the thriving community that kind of exists on Instagram of, of craft beer drinkers. Like, and it really made me realize that basically anything you're into, you can probably find a community online and who's, who's excited and, you know, wants to learn and, and communicate and connect, um, which I thought was super cool about starting the page and doing something like this, I think is an awesome way to, to meet people who are into beer, who have similar interests. And you actually want to talk about it because like Jesse said, like, I don't have that many friends outside of Jesse who <laughs> want to talk craft beer with me. They're like, um, like, like it's just not something that they're going to sit down and chat about and, you know, share that kind of, that kind of experience. So it's been really cool to kind of meet a couple of people through the page and talk to people online and getting the comments on our, on our photos. It's, it really is a cool community and we're pretty, uh, we were pretty got us excited to kind of be a part of it. Um, and I've really enjoyed that about the page. Very cool. Jesse, any, any comments on that or? Yeah, no, it's been awesome. Um, I think that, you know, I'm trying to think back to the discussions around the patio piece. Um, it's just been such a great way and be able to do beer to go. I think one of the interesting things that 
we'll see if they change or if it sticks around or to your point, the bottle shops, there's been a couple of those that have popped up uh, throughout the city. I know one kind of near me is uh, Boxcar Social now has a, a bottle shop on, I think it's young, like it's kind of up near Rosedale station. Um, and they've got a great selection of craft from all over the city. So it's far for me to get out to, you know, like Great Lakes, Great Lakes Brewery to get some of their exclusive stuff that's not on the LCBOs. But if it, they get a case dropped off at some of these bottle shops, it's a great medium, right? So if you're not able to do the delivery post COVID, these bottle shops are an awesome development uh, to be able to get some of that exclusive stuff that you won't find in the LCBO. Yeah, no, uh, I like it. Uh, you know, uh, having interviewed Jordan St. John, he's mentioned, you know, beer stores on the way out. That's, that's it. Like they're, they're not keeping up. At least the LCBO is the same kind of like the SAQ here where it is the hard liquor. So that, that will keep them alive as the wine and hard liquor. Uh, but people, you know, it wants to pour logo, but two go to the source if you can. So yeah, totally. yeah. it's, uh, it's probably more reliable for me to order a six pack and, and wait a couple of days or next day delivery versus going to the LCBO and checking the bottom of the can and seeing it's like four months old. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. But uh, I mean, I, I know the, I believe the LCBO, O's have kind of the the brand managers of each type. Like there's the wine person, there's the beer person, there's the whiskey person. So I'm guessing whatever LCBO you possibly go to has a reliable beer person. So yeah, we're really there's there's a couple great LCBOs in the city. Um, the first, I'd say the the premier craft LCBO would be the one at Summerhill Station. Uh, it's in an old trains. It's in an old train station. Uh, it's, it's beautiful, but they have an entire room dedicated to craft beer. Um, so like during peak COVID, um, you know, even before the breweries had adopted the delivery model, that was where I would go because you could find everything. Um, like even some of the like fancy bottled stuff would be popping up in the, uh, in this LCBO. So we're lucky we have a couple of good ones. That one's really good. There's one on Queens key. That's really solid. The DuPont Spadina one is pretty good. So I've actually been pleasantly yeah. impressed with uh, a few of the LCBO's uh, craft selection and how they've they've really branched out to uh, get you know breweries from all over, not only the province but the country as well. Yeah, uh, Cal, where, where you are in BC, any like really unique bottle shops that you found that you're like, if I'm ever back here, this is the place I'm hitting. Yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of bottle shops, I'm trying to think. Of no nothing really comes to mind, but there are some really great breweries and. Um, my favorite, I was actually living kind of up around Sea to Sky, Whistler, Pemberton area. Um, and my favorite brewery nearby is definitely the Beer Farmers. It's a little small, uh, brewery kind of up in that area. They, it was literally a farm. Um, <laughs> they make their own beer. It's a really, really cool spot. Um, and they, they have some really good beers. So in terms of bottle shops, I mean, I, I found that the, the variance among, I mean, BC, obviously the distribution is a little bit different and that, you know, BC, there is a BC liquor store, but you can also buy beer and wine and everything at, at different stores as well. Um, and I found that it, it's not, the BC liquor stores at least are not as good as, as the LCBO. Um, I think the LCBO does a pretty good job considering it is all controlled by one board. They do a pretty good job of at least getting a big variety of craft beer in there. Um, and, and at least some of the stores kind of like as we talked about, like doing, take, doing, they come justice to a lot of the breweries that are that are around the area. Um, so I think it's in it's some of the area in where I am out here. Um, I'd say some of the the liquor stores in the in the, in the nearby area, like they're fine. Like you know, you just like to the craft mostly from Vancouver breweries. Um, some of the smaller ones, though, you have to go kind of right to the source for those. So. Um, you know, it's, it's touch and go a little bit, but I, I will give a shout out to the LCBO and some of the areas there. Like I used to go to the one at, um, oh, was it Front and Spadina, which is kind of where I, near where I live in Toronto. And um, they kind of redid, I think it was at the King and Spadina, they redid the whole store and moved it down a street, basically. Um, and they've done a pretty good job of, you know, having a big craft selection. Um, they usually have a lot of new stuff. So uh, they, they do a decent job in terms of considering it's all controlled by one area, but... Um, definitely prefer to go to the brewery, buy the beer from them um, if I can. And also the fact there are some really, uh, some bottle shops opening up in different areas in the city and now around Ontario, um, kind of democratizing a little bit. The sale of beer, I think is, is fantastic. And um, I like going to the LCBO, but I prefer to go right to the source. I mean, 
if Star takes a cut, so you yeah. know they're not getting it all. Um, so I like to know that you know my money's going right to the people who made it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do either of you homebrew right now? I do not. Yeah, we don't, but I, I will say this has been something that I've been really interested in the last kind of year. One, um, I think I was always a little bit interested in, in getting into the homebrew and, and investigating kind of what would it take to make that happen um, and kind of get into it a little bit. Um, I think the page was loaded a catalyst for that as well, just exploring more around the craft beer industry and uh, the community that, that kind of thrives in this in this industry is pretty cool. And I would say it's definitely something that I'm, that I'm interested in doing. Um, I think once I get back to Toronto, it's something I have to look into more and just figure out what are the pieces that I need to get involved in, in that and, and start trying stuff out. Because, uh, yeah, it's definitely something that I know a lot of people in the, in the craft beer world kind of are into. And and I think that's, that's pretty exciting to me. I'd be really interested to get into it. Yeah. I know it's wealth... I don't, I want to say short finger, but I have a feeling I'm wrong, uh, but they have a brew, a brew shop. So it's like everything you need to homebrew. And there's <laughs> also the brewery attached to it. And, and if, like you guys said, like through the Instagram community, you can get information from your fellow Instagrammers from Pinterest and all this other stuff of, about homebrewing. The one thing I know is cleanliness is next to godliness when it comes to brewing. So. <laughs> yeah. That's from what I've kind of, kind of read recently and well, you know, just trying to learn as much as I can. That's how it's going to come up. It's like, you do not want anything else in there other than whatever you're making to using to make beer. So yes. Uh, would you guys love to collab with a brew about like to make a Stein guys beer? Absolutely. Yeah, that would be, awesome. uh, <laughs> I think that'd be a dream come true. That'd be really cool. Do you kind of have an idea combined of what style you go for? Would you go for a hybrid style? Would you, you know, make an IPL and India pay a logger. Cause since you're the Stein guys or two, you both throw in ideas. Do you have like a general idea of, of what you'd love to brew? That's a cool idea. I think that we both uh, are really big IPA fans. So I think that we would probably go somewhere in that route. Uh, and, you know, I can't say I've thought a lot about this, but even looking at, at this can or, you know, a, a Great Lakes beer can having a, our logo with the little Stein guys faces on it would be, would be freaking sweet. So if you guys are watching this and you want to do a collaboration, come on, give us a call. <laughs> yeah. I, I would always think we'd probably go for like a, a kind of hazy style IPA or something. Totally. Something with, with not, not too bitter, but like some really nice kind of fruity, fruity aromas in there and a lot of kind of late, late hops. But uh, yeah, I think that would be, I feel like if we're going for a style, it's probably something like that. Awesome. Uh, okay. So when you guys are back together in Toronto, uh, I come out there, let's say I've never been to Toronto before for some reason, even though I'm in my <laughs> early forties, uh, like top three to five places that you, you, you're together. It's like, Hey, carp, come and have a beer with us or come and have a flight with us at these places. All right. Yeah. You want to go first, Cal? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a really, I mean, there's so many, so many to pick from. I know between the two of us, Bandit, which for sure be on that list. Um, in terms of maybe of the other three, um, I think there was a really cool, last summer we did a really cool bike tour to the East End um, and got to hit a couple breweries along the way. I think Black Lab was definitely, I knew Jesse got the glass there, definitely one of the, one of the great ones we hit along the way. And um, I'd probably put, I'd probably Black Lab on, the, on that list. I know they have a really great back patio and some really cool um, different beers. And they're usually doing some new stuff too. So I'd probably put Black Lab on the list. Um, Jesse, I'll throw it over you. Yeah, no, Black Lab and uh, Bandit would definitely be up there. Um, as I said before, I'm a big ambiance guy. I, I, you know, if I'm taking you out for a beer, I want to make sure it's a good environment around us. And ideally some halfway decent snacks too while we, uh, have a couple IPAs. So I'd probably throw a left field in there, assuming COVID's not happening. Cause right now they don't have a patio, but their tap room is amazing uh, when it is open. So being able to rock, rock their tap room was really cool. And then um, I also, I, I must admit, I haven't tried too many of their beers because they're on the pricier end. Um, but Burdock, Burdock Brewery uh, on Bloor has a really cool patio and some very, uh interesting and, and funky beers so i'd probably throw them in as well but you have to be ready to spend a bit more cash if you're gonna go gonna go there for some drinks yeah that's uh that's been the benefit of the last two uh it'll actually be three years very soon of, of my current employer is uh 
money is actually like, hey, I can go out and do stuff instead of my last job. Whereas, hey, I have to live. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, That's always nice. That's yeah, always yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's so, better to have that than the other. <laughs> yes, yes. Much, much more so. And uh, the industry I work in, thankfully, it involves, uh, I mean, we have something to do with the vaccine, but we don't produce the vaccine. It's, it's a long story, but my company is thriving. The company I work for is thriving. So I know I'm, I'm secure. So that's, nice. uh, that's something very important in my life is secure. And they, people actually listen to me while I talk about craft beer, which is weird. So yeah. <laughs> oh, we love that. Yeah. Uh, so I know you guys have a lot, like a lot of stories. Uh, we, we had mentioned earlier, the, uh, the attribute uh, stories, uh, but I noticed you guys have done a couple of giveaways. Uh, what kind of makes you decide, like, we're going to do a giveaway when we hit this many followers? Or we're going to do a giveaway when we hit this timeline? Like, what 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 do you, makes you guys decide to give to have giveaways? I think that honestly, it it's been pretty random uh, the times that we've done it. Like, it hasn't really been super planned out or super methodical. Um, the one big one that I will say we planned out a bit was ironically our our hundredth post lined up with a, our one year anniversary of starting the page uh so i think that was kind of the bigger one that we did um you know that just felt natural like hey this is super exciting for us we've met so many great people through this community over the last year let's try and make someone's day and you know give them a gift card to a brewery of their choice so that was the one that we did most recently uh and the best part was i think most of the people who entered the giveaway were like friends and family because, you know, we, we have a decent amount of followers, but our page isn't like massive by any means. And I'd say a, a good portion of it are friends and friends and family as well. And uh, ironically, the one person who won was, you know, one of the five or 10 people who we have no clue who they are. Uh, so it was really cool that we were actually able to give a gift card for beer to some random guy uh, who, you know, has shown support on our page and, uh, you know, has gotten good beer recommendations through us. Uh, so that, that felt really great to be able to, you know, supply his, uh, his Friday night drinks or, or whatever he ended up using the, the money on. So I think anytime we can do it, we want to, um, but we just need, need more reasons to do it. I love the flight board. What, what I, I read the story, uh, what, what obviously you have great friends who are giving you beautiful flight boards. Uh, Seriously, what, what made them figure like, here's the gift, like for, for Jesse? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I'd say, so I live with two buddies, uh, from school and we always do, um, I wouldn't say like super expensive gifts, but we try our best between the three of us. Well, I guess two giving a gift to the third to make it something really thoughtful. Um, and this year they surprised me and knew that, you know, Cal and I had been working on our page a ton and, uh, it's been a really big hobby of mine. And I have a, you know, I think similar to a lot of craft brew fans, I have a ridiculous glass collection. So I've got probably like 40 different craft beer glasses that are all nicely displayed on my shelf. I see you looking at what I'm guessing is your collection as yeah, well. I, I've got a couple of hundred. <laughs> so. Okay. So you've got, you've got me beat. <laughs> Maybe uh, one day we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's future. I, I'm uh, looking into uh, the future there. Yeah. I, I mean, I would go to beer festivals and bring home five glasses. Like, yeah. It's, it's hard to say no. Right. So, it's yes. like they, they're the cost of a, they're the cost of a beer most of the time. And it's a good memento for, you know, an experience or something that made you, you know, feel a type of way when you had a beer out of that glass. And it's just a nice, a nice memory. Um, it's good to know. I don't have a crazy addiction hearing that you have, uh, you know, a hundred that I'm not, I'm not alone here. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad. I'm, I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that we're, you know, going from the glasses to the, the flight board is I've got a couple of great sets of flight glasses from different breweries, but I didn't have uh, a flight board, which I actually didn't even really think about. Uh, like when Cal and I would do flights before, we'd kind of just use the flight glasses, just whatever, not even having a fancy board. Uh, I actually grabbed it just in preparation for the the call. And so it's like, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. So it's like uh, a wood, the lighting's not the best, but it's a wood etched in a uh, logo of ours. And you have room for four glasses. Um, and then this is actually a chalkboard. So you can write, you know, the uh, type of beer and the alcohol percentage and things of that. It's made by um, Holtz Apple and Co. And they just do a bunch of custom custom woodworking out of the U.S. But 
Yeah, super thoughtful gift. I actually, uh, I've been saving it for Cal and I to do a flight when he's back. So I haven't, haven't done one yet, but it will be awesome for us to be able to crack it open and hopefully get a good review on it. Yeah, no, very cool. Uh, I love it. And the copper handle, uh, copper-ish? I can't yeah, tell copper if it's copper. Yeah, copper-ish. Yeah, yeah it's, so it's definitely something. The, the handles are very cool, too, because you don't have to, like, hold it by the sides and kind of awkwardly could just grab it by both handles. So very cool. Uh, I'll definitely have to look into those guys for my own uh for my own yeah, show totally. and, and my friends get an stuff, all so. beer inside a uh, uh, flight board. That'd yeah, be sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, I see you guys also go out and do cider flights. What, what makes you like decide not just craft beer, but si- craft cider as well. Yeah, that, I think that was me. Um, that my girlfriend is actually gluten-free, which uh, makes it tricky to go to breweries as you can imagine. Um, so luckily there have been uh, a couple of really cool cider, uh, cider houses uh here in toronto and then also back home where i grew up in minneapolis um so just trying to diversify our content a little bit and keep it within the local supporting local craft community one of my favorites here is uh i think it's called her father's cider house here in toronto it's on harvard street they have an insane amount of bottled ciders for you to try um and they do flights as well um and I actually forget the name of the one in Minneapolis that we did, but it was again, a COVID thing. So we couldn't go in, bought like six different ciders and had like all the, the tasting notes and all the different types of apples that go into the ciders. Uh, you know, it's so similar to a beer just in terms of um, the method and the, you know, the thoughtfulness that goes into brewing each of the unique flavor palettes that comes out of a cider. So um, yeah, it, it's been really fun to try those as well. Okay, uh, beercation. So I have had to add this caveat uh, once, well, one, when it's safe to sit in a cylindrical tube with recycled air and people aren't coughing on you, <laughs> giving you COVID. Uh, so when it's safe to travel again, two beercations, uh, either together or separate, however you guys want to answer. One where I have a job, I have to go back to work eventually. So it'll be like a week away somewhere. And then here in Canada right now, the lottery is $70 million. You win the lotto, you can quit your job, you can do the <laughs> ultimate beercation. What are those two beer cations you guys want to do? Wow, that's a tough question. Um, I think first and foremost, and Cal, I'd love it if you want to come with, but no pressure if, if you want me to go solo on this one. Um, but I think that doing Oktoberfest again, uh, you know, to your point, this would probably be the having to come back to work uh, world. I don't think I'd want to do Oktoberfest every weekend while it's running. Um, but we were in such a rush. You know, we were like crashing in some tiny Airbnb we had to fly out the next morning. Uh, you know, we were college students, didn't have a, un, you know, a limitless puck, bucket of cash. So it's just like, you know, it, it would be great to do it again, having done it once um, and, you know, maybe do it for the entire weekend or for three days or something like that and see more than just the one tent. Go to, I think there's like eight different tents, which each have a different type of beer. So getting to go and try some of the other different types of beer uh, would be awesome. So I'd say that would be my, for sure, my work, uh, my work trip. I think my non-work trip, uh, you know, you've talked a lot about Instagram was in the U S uh, and having grown up in the U S uh, I haven't had much of an experience to, to an opportunity to experience the craft beer scene in the States. So if I could quit my job today and, and had won the lottery, I think, you know, buying an RV or getting a fancy van and driving from coast to coast with a, a list of craft breweries and, you know, hitting all the cool sites to see in the States along the way would be, would be a really fun trip. And again, Cal, you're welcome to come with me if you want to. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny because what I had in mind was almost the reverse of exactly what you said there, because I was thinking if I was going to go kind of like one week away, got to come back for work, I would probably um, fly out to west, the West coast of the States and, and do a little bit of a road trip through like Oregon, Seattle, uh, or yeah, like in Seattle and Washington and, and California and hit a lot of the breweries along there. Cause I know like, I mean, you know, that's, there's a big beer history through there and lots of good spots to hit. So I'd probably spend a week or something doing that. Um, and then my, you know, I went in the lottery kind of trip would probably, I, I would definitely go back, go back to Europe and, and explore one, I think Germany, obviously huge beer history there. Um, Oktoberfest is obviously one of the big event, big events that happens there. But I remember I went back there uh, kind of right after I finished school and did a little bit of a tour through through a couple of areas in Europe. And I mean, there's there is a lot of beer there that you can find. I feel like it's just a beer world that I don't understand as much because 
Um, obviously, I'm here in North America, where I'm mostly booking the Canadian beers and maybe a couple from the States. Um, but I think there's, there's a lot of kind of cool beer history there and um, probably some really interesting breweries. And I think exploring around that area and just um, hitting a lot of those different spots and learning about the history of it and um, that kind of stuff, I probably, I think I have a lot of fun doing that. So that would be my like, I don't know, un unlimited trip where I could just go and explore and, and enjoy and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's where I'm torn if it's ever the lotto thing is that, you know, like Jesse's idea of, of getting an RV, start in Maine, work my way to Oregon, down yeah. to California, up to Florida and back. You know, that's awesome, too. And then it's like, well, Europe. I've never been personally. Uh, mm. I'd like to go see my family heritage in Ireland, Scotland, uh, England. Yeah. You know, visit all that stuff and go drink awesome beer in Belgium, Germany, Czech Republic. It's uh, Prague. Yeah. It's just there's so much good beer all over the world, you know, Australia, New Zealand. There's so much to drink. Like, there's so much to drink at some point. Uh, it's it's so we need some sort of worldwide unification craft beer law <laughs> type of thing. So did you say did you say the lottery right now is 70 million? Yes. OK, well, we could we could probably fit in uh, both <laughs> if we're being honest. Here. So let's yeah, let's just quit the job, do the road trip and then. Uh, you know, get a cheap house somewhere in Europe and, and do weekend trips via Ryanair. There you go. Uh, it, that's, that's one part that sucks about Canada. Our flights are so expensive between each yeah. other and Europe and the U S it's like you could fly from New York city to Florida for $17 or some ridiculous <laughs> value like that. Seriously. It's kind of unfortunate, but uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a product of where we live. Uh, I accept it. I'm very yeah. happy being Canadian. So, yeah. So am I agreed. Uh, so you're originally from Minnesota. I'm guessing Vikings fan by default. Diehard Vikings fan. Oh no! Yeah. Uh, I'm Are Packers. you a Packers fan? Yeah, I'm a Packers right. fan. So how do I how do I end the call? Is it, <laughs> if I hit this if I hit this button up here, does it does it yeah. wrap things up? We'll, we'll have to uh, maybe uh, next uh, next season uh, meet up somewhere, grab beer, yeah, that would and be... talk the the benefits of football. Uh, That'd be great. Unfortunately, uh, we may lose our quarterback, so. There's that. Yeah, well, at least you have one. So yeah, yeah. there's that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so what's next for the Stein guys after COVID's kind of loosened things up? Uh, you know, once there's a whole lot less pandemic, where do you guys see your guys going when it comes to the Instagram, uh, visiting more breweries? Like where where's the journey for Stein guys going to continue? Yeah, I think I can start this one off. I think I have a, a couple ideas. I know we talked about a couple things and I think first and foremost is getting back to breweries, getting back to, to the people in, in kind of the community and really getting back to those businesses and enjoying a, enjoying a pint or a flight uh, on the patio or in, in the tap room. Um, I think that's going to be the number one priority is getting back to enjoying that. I know we're all, we're all missing it. Um, but I think just, just kind of taking a focus, you know, bringing it back to the page and kind of why we started is just a great way to one support local, but also kind of share our, thoughts and, and kind of experiences with beer and that idea. I know Jesse talks about that kind of beer diary a little bit. It's just like a log of the stuff we're drinking and what we think about it. Um, I think just coming, coming back to that and making sure we stay true to that a little bit as the page continues to continues to grow and we continue to, I guess, go along the journey a little bit and meet as we meet more people and try new stuff and hopefully get out to new places to, to try new beers and check out new breweries. Um, I think there's a, a lot of, kind of exciting stuff going for the, for the page. And I know we're looking forward to definitely getting back to a lot of those places and just getting back to enjoying a, a drink with friends uh, on a patio or something. I think that's going to be the, at least for me, that's the number one thing I'm looking forward to is being back and, and enjoying that kind of stuff. But I think there's a, a lot of exciting stuff that we're, we're excited to kind of get into on the page. Yeah, I mean, I know you guys were lucky you didn't have a curfew like we did in Quebec, but the, the first week the curfew dropped and, and the same week the patio or terrace is here, it's patio, uh, opened at 931. Everybody was cheering on the patio because we were able to stay outside and drink beer. So, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a weird world that that's uh, that that was it's something that happened. Um, <laughs> now that we think about it, it's like, you know, two years ago, never would have imagined. Um, but that is the nature of life. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> things yeah. change. Uh, so Jesse, similar, similar feeling for the what's next for the Stein guys? Yeah, I think so. I think that also, um, you know, it, it, summertime is just the best time for, I think, people who create content in the beer world. Uh, just 
especially from a photo perspective, you can, you have so much more that you can do with showcasing the beers and a lot of breweries, you know, I do so many awesome limited releases, especially throughout the summer. So I'm really excited for that. I'm also selfishly really excited to get Cal back in the city so we can, you know, collaborate together. It's a lot easier to strategize and think through new ideas when you're around each other, motivating one another. So it's going to be great to get this guy back and uh, for us to be able to work together. Cause yeah, I think this is something that we're both super passionate about. Um, but it's just, you know, right now kind of at the side of our desk, since we both have to work our day jobs and are pretty busy in, in life. So it'll be, it'll be awesome for us to, to focus on it uh, a bit more throughout the summer. Very cool. Uh- and I'll also add on to add it quickly onto that. I think one of the things that I, we talked about a little bit on the call today is just um, we've kind of talked to a lot of different people in the community over the last year, but you know, given it's been COVID, we haven't really been able to meet any of those people kind of thing. Like we haven't really been meeting up in person. I think that'll be a really cool thing as well is hopefully be able to meet some of the people we've met through the page and like totally. chatted with over DM and that kind of stuff. Um, because I think that'll be, that'll be really fun to be able to meet up with those people. And I know do some swaps and some trades and get into the, the actual kind of personal and like, you know, people aspect of, of the beer world, I think will be really exciting um yeah and that's something that i'm looking forward to for sure yeah as the show uh you know the way we look at it is the more we can keep COVID under control at some point this summer as the show myself my videographer uh we're gonna head out to toronto and, and we want to meet everybody we spoke to even if it's just uh at steam whistle on the giant patio whatever it's let's all get together and have a beer and well we're all vaxxed up and we're not worried about passing a deadly disease on to yeah we might get it and might knock us on our feet off our feet, but bringing it home to our parents and giving it to them, uh, no bueno. So mm-hmm. yeah. we'll, uh, we'll have a couple beers and argue football. It'll be, exactly. a, good, it'll exactly. be a good day. Perfect. I'm looking forward uh, to it. The CFL is coming back. Maybe we could collaborate on, on that. Oh, come on. <laughs> CFL. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I got no other questions. I really appreciate you guys speaking with uh, me today. Uh, let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just the Stein guys on on Instagram. That's where we're going to be. Uh, sorry if our stories get a little annoying. We post a lot of them, but uh, yeah, super excited to you know meet everybody. And Garp, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us. It's I think that going back to what Cal just said about meeting people, you know, going from Instagram to email to virtual face, it's uh, it's been awesome chatting with you. So really appreciate you taking the time and love all the effort that you're doing on this podcast. Uh, that's truly appreciated. Uh, any kind words, I'll gladly accept. Uh, <laughs> no problem. It really gets my dopamine up, so I'll, uh, I'll take that. Awesome. Uh, so that's all going to be – all the links will be in the show notes. Uh, if you like what you saw, subscribe, hit the like uh, not- uh, hit the like and notification bell. That would always help us. Uh, if you want to follow me for my uh, beer and horror or Thursday night tastings, I'm at Killer Carpe Diem. For the show, we're at All Beer Inside on all social media. And as I say in the end of all episodes, drink craft, not crap.